Hey y'all, this is Robin with Heroes Legend Studios and like I mentioned in my last video for the custom idle animation I wanted to do a follow-up video going over the touch points. Um, last time we finished up with uh, having this idle animation appear but touching the screen or clicking any of the areas will not update the idle animation. We actually physically have to move using the arrow keys before that idle animation comes up. So uh, the reason why I wanted to create a separate video is because we're going to have to deal with some scripting and I felt like I didn't want to continue to add on to the previous video. It was already long enough and things can get a little bit more um, troublesome in following and I want to make sure that in this video I make uh, everything a little bit more clear uh, when it comes to scripting because not, not everyone that uses RPG Maker uh, is a programmer or knows how to code or knows any coding languages so it's best to just have that simplified and explained more thoroughly in these uh, separate videos okay so that's where we left off touch points weren't working you can only move and update the auto animation using the directional keys uh, by pressing these buttons um, that we've defined here. So in order to detect we also want to detect touch input. So I'm going to copy and paste this value here and this is part of the enable idle just like before we are just using a lot of common events to makes things and our event system just a little bit easier to follow and update. Uh, so we're going to keep everything the same uh, you know if is playing idle is on we're going to update the idle and we're going to set the timer just as any of the other buttons are I'm going to press spacebar and to edit this and instead of a button I'm going to go to the script here we need to check uh, there's no way to detect touch input uh, other than through script and we just want to make sure that uh, that is pressed is the value we're checking so if is pressed on there are other uh, values to check such as is clicked and uh, a couple other things I can't think of right now but is press is the one we want to check uh, this I haven't gone too deep into understanding exactly the difference but is pressed is checking every frame and giving you the most up-to-date information uh, from what I understand so for this input and this co correct update, you need to use is press. Do you can try the other ones; it's not going to work. Um, you need to check is pressed. This is going to give you the correct uh, touch data when you need it, and check at the correct time. I believe some of the other touch input events uh, are triggered at different times and maybe are too late for the event and how this event works. So. Uh, if you want a deeper explanation of that, uh, maybe I'll make an additional video or just ask in the comments and I can try to clarify that. But just know that for the correct timing of this event and how we want to move the player around, how the idle works, um, we need to use is pressed. Okay. Okay. Now, you'll notice a little bug with this because uh, we can set everything up here and once we play the game, there's going to be a little bug and you'll notice that we'll do a double check uh, so let's go to idle I can click away from the player and but it doesn't move me and that's part of the issue that I wanted to make a separate video for as well so what we want to do is when the player presses the touch input we are not getting we are not setting a destination for some reason, anytime you, I guess, check this input, we're kind of overwriting it for whatever reason. And uh, the only way I found to overwrite this the correct way is to set the de destination into, again, I don't have a second screen, so I'm just going to bring this up. Um, there's a couple things I've added. Uh, I'm going to show off two variables, kind of show exactly what touch input is at the time of click and just to view that and we're going to use uh, some math here um, 
the JavaScript library has a math and a floor value which rounds down. So floor value just always rounds down, and I'll explain that when we uh, when we write it and why I do that, and exactly why do we divide by 48. So uh, let's go ahead. And I'm just going to add uh, these items here. We're going to add these two variables and add the script. Here, this is where we set the destination on that click or that press and to move the player so that the player can press it, disable the idle, and move uh, just how any other movement may be. So let's go ahead and add those two variables. Control variable here. I'm going to add two new ones. Um, let's just say touch. Uh, touch input dot x and touch input dot y touch input dot y okay apply and I want to set this to some game data and it's just going to be the script and it's going to be just touch input dot x and I'm just going to copy that paste that there, change that to variable number 3, and change that to y, and this is going to be 2y. We're going to set it to that, that data. Okay. Alright, double check that, touch x, touch y, um, that's okay, it means the same thing. Um, so, let me get the other script in here, everything else is the same. Uh, when we press it, we always want to set the the destination. So I'm going to create this script, new script, and I have a variable x, and I'm going to have a variable y. So, and then we're just going to use math floor. And I actually wrote this down, so I can just copy and paste it. Okay, so variable x is just the x position of the touch input, and then y is the touch input of y. Um, we divide that value by 4, 48, and because each unit or uh, tile piece here is uh, 48 by 48, so the entire screen is made up of about 17 uh, tiles across left to right and uh, I think 13 tiles up and down so we are getting the entire touch input because touch input is uses the screen resolution so by default the screen resolution of an RPG maker MZ game is 816 don't quote me on this uh, by 624 I believe we can just do the math It'd be 48 times 17 816 and then 48 times 13 624 look at that right <laughs> I got it uh, yay me party cannon um, so perfect so that's gonna give us a value but that doesn't so when we set the destination the destination is expecting actual tile values so it expects the max value to be 17 and the max value of, uh, of for y would be 13 on a 17 by 13 grid size uh, and anything in between from 0 to those numbers so uh, what do we do uh, so we ha that's exactly why we divide we take that whole screen resolution and divide by 48 to create that tile or that grid and what happens is if we have 48 divided by 48 that gives us one that means we're gonna we'll be clicking in 1x by 1y which is this little tile here where the first row is 0 and then the first column is 0 so 1 1 is here so this is exactly why we do floor the floor in the math uh, library rounds down, always rounds down. So we can understand that 
zero zero starts at the top left of the map and goes and increases um, to the 816 by 624 all the way to the bottom right of the map. So we understand that 0 to 816 and 0 to 624. Okay. So anything less than 48 by 48 should end up being a 0, 0 tile. Okay. So when x is 39 or 47, it's going to get a value less than 1. It's going to be 0 0.9, 0 0.97, whatever it may be. We're going to round that down to 0. And same for uh, the y position. So that's why we use floor. It's meant to always round down and give us the expected position of what we want. Uh, and once we get that grid set piece uh, for x and y, we put that into our set destination. And this is part of the game temp um, object. So that's a quick explanation. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and I'll further explain it once we play. Um, that's really it. That's all that's needed for the touch animation. Uh, so once we idle here, we can see that I can click here and our player immediately goes to that location. I can press F9, go to my variables, you can see that 31 and 28 are both less than 48 because the 48 by 48 is our whole tile. So it should be 0, 0. Okay. And if I click 1 over, and you can see I can continue to click quite a lot to ensure that we are like hitting those edges exactly how we expect. There's no overlap that we're expecting. We're hitting each grid tile separately and we ex from where we expect. And that's all thanks to the floor uh, method from the math library. So there you go. There you have it. Uh, I hope that was a quick and easy tutorial to follow. Um, if you didn't know about that math stuff, now you do. Uh, if you want to see more of my tutorials, go ahead and like, uh, subscribe, and always remember to follow my Twitch page. And you can always ask me questions here in the comments on YouTube or join me on my uh, Twitch uh, streams ask me about RPG Maker questions and uh, Unity questions so uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time